Do you want to hear how to sell your sneakers online? Then I want you to stick around because I'm going to give you a tutorial that will help you make 10 grand a month flipping shoes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to sell your sneakers on the internet and how to make up to $10,000 a month flipping shoes. Number one, think about the photographs. You want to make sure you have the right photographs for your, for your footwear. This is very important. This is essential. Before you get started, Remember to stay away from taking product images from another website. We live in a world right now where you have a, a internet, internet uh, fraud or you have IP issues going on, so you want to take your own pictures. I'm sure you have a phone right now. You have a smartphone if you're listening to me. You'll probably even listen to me through a smartphone. So use your phone and you want to basically take your own pictures. Do not pull images from Nike or Adidas or on Google. No, don't do that. Make sure the pictures are original photos. This is very important. So th the thing here is that you want to project from the get-go a very professional image about your brand, about your business, about your sidekick. So it is very important while you're taking a picture of the, the footwear you want to sell on the internet to make sure that you do some research around real versus fake. You want to read as many real versus fake guys on the internet so that you have an idea of the footwear you're selling you have an idea of about the originality the uniqueness of the footwear you're selling and please take pictures from different angles take different detailed shots from different angles so if the item is uh, is dead stock it's always smart to include a photo of the tags receipt and even the label on the box as well as a shot of the outside as evidence that the shoes have not been worn the idea here is to establish trust between you and your um, and your and your audience. So for highly sought after sneakers, buyers will be especially wary of counterfeits. This is very important. Number two, besides photographs, you want to think about description. Now that you have your photographs, you have to spend some time describing your sneakers. This is very important. Let's let, let me give you an example. You let's say you have an Air Jordan One Retro Royal as an example you want to first go on the internet and search for your shoe so you can have a you can have some idea of of uh, what others have written about the about the, the shoe about the footwear you can even go on sites such as St stock x or F flat club to have an idea so you can have you you'll be able to know exactly what kind of content people are expecting when it comes to the description of the footwear so be sure though to highlight though to highlight content in your photographs to highlight things in your photographs that show the uniqueness of, of the footwear you can go in detail or you can stay at the surface as you want the key is to always provide more information that you think will be required to avoid what any misunderstanding after the transaction has occurred let's talk about the condition so if your sneakers have never been worn or tried on you can list them as dead stock otherwise you have to use your discretion when describing the condition of your sneakers. One thing I want to say though, you always want to be as um, as truthful as possible. It's very important. Make sure you're honest when selling or trading a pair of used sneakers. It's all about integrity, folks. Shoes are often appraised with terms such as VNDS, this is like very, very near dead stock, or on a scale of 1 to 10. So you got to use your best judgment in terms of determining whether this is whether whether this is a one two three or ten uh, scale uh, footwear or what kind of uh, pnds appraisal you need to assign to it here is i'm going to give you a short glossary of other sneaker terms to help you out so you have ds that's the dead stock vnds that's the very near dead stock you have the og that's the original uh, original PE, that's player exclusive, and then you have LE, this is limited edition. One thing that, that I have found is that, for instance, if you are, let's say you have a, you have a pair of, Yeez, uh, of Yeezys, and the pair of Yeezys is scored 8 to 10, you wouldn't have any problem just um, you know selling that. But the thing here is that you have to make sure that there is demand for the kind of sh footwear you are trying to flip in the first place, okay? 
let's now talk about cleaning so once you have uh, taken photographs in your description you have described the item and you have verified the condition of the item let's talk about cleaning so cleaning is cleaning is very important also because again cleaning kind of helps you establish that relationship i was talking to you earlier about uh, between you and your prospective sellers your prospective buyers rather so if you're looking to maximize what you get for your sneakers and you should be you'll need to clean them before photographing them even if they seem to be in decent condition you'll be surprised at how much better they will look after a good clean especially the soles so a shoe that would have been previously that would have been previously advertised as a 5 over 10 condition due to dirty soles and stain uppers can potentially be described as 6, 10, 6 over 10 or even 7 over 10 after a solid scrub do not take this for don't, don't take this seriously so what to clean when we talk about what to clean on the sneakers that you're trying to sell you want to clean every part of the sneaker you, you can reach the most obvious places are the mid and outsoles of course right as cleaning those automatically makes a pair of kicks look fresher this is this is also where most of the dirt and wear on the sneaker shows once your midsoles and outsoles are clean, you want to take a look at the upper. Now, it really depends on the material, but you should be able to scrub out a good number of stains and marks. What to use when it comes to cleaning? It really depends on the materials your shoes are made of. I mean, it's it really up to you. So you gotta. It's it's on. This is on a case by case basis. Let's say if you have. Um, let me just say this most mid and outsoles for most mid and outsoles you can use any combo of brush and soap if your sneaker is made of leather or a suit for example you might want to invest in material specific cleaning products so canvas and needed materials are generally easy to clean and can in certain situations even be thrown in the washing machine i mean don't it'll be noisy though when you have that but it is it is very effective when it product wise there are brands specialized in sneaker cleaning so the big ones are you and you can you can google this but you'll find jason mark and crep protect and those are the big ones and the smaller ones you have smaller names like sneakers er and uh, res shoe envr and those are worth also worth looking into in terms of pricing if you want to sell your sneakers on the internet before even setting on the price Please, before selling the price, you want to you want to run a search on big platforms such as StockX to quickly gauge the value of what you're selling. Remember, the price you you set should be in line with the market price, so you're being compensated properly for the sneakers you want to sell, and and it has to be fair to prospective buyers. So if your prices for some reason do not align with the market, guess what? You'll either be underpricing yourself out of value or overpricing your goods and getting no responses to your listing and you don't want that time is money folks time is money so stock x price this is something i want to say that stock x prices tends to be a little higher than the true market value due to the fees it charges seller sellers so many sellers price their sneakers higher so that it cancels out the fee still it's probably one of the easiest way to figure out what to charge for your kicks another another option would be to post a price check in a forum or a Facebook buying selling group where other sneaker heads will give you an idea of what your kicks are going for. I'll be right back right after this. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're all having a conversation here around um, how to sell your sneakers on the internet, and I'm giving you the complete the the complete step by step you need to 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 follow to sell your sneakers profitably on the internet and make upwards of ten thousand dollars per month so let's say when it comes to payment if you are transacting through paypal i recommend having uh, paying or receiving the money as goods or services regardless of which online marketplace you're using if a buyer claims they did not receive their item the uh the protection policy will cover sellers for the full amount of the payment as long as you can produce a receipt or proof that the item was shipped by the way make sure you use you just go on the internet and just choose a, a template an invoice template in excel so that you, you the whole operation of your, your whole sneaker operation is as professional as possible what are the online sneaker marketplaces i'm going to elaborate on this 
later on in the show but i just want to quickly give, quickly give you a, an idea here so in the united states grailed has become a go-to destination for resellers with sellers of counterfeit goods being banned so when an item sells grailed takes about six percent commission plus applicable paypal fees and paypal fees are about 2.9 percent and 30 cents for domestic sales 4.4 percent and 30 cents for international you also have stock x they have a great platform once your product is sold stock x acts as they, they will act as a middleman to verify authenticity internally even providing sellers with a ups shipping label addressed to its detroit facility and you have for europe you have clicked Collect is quickly becoming a respected online marketplace as well. And recently, the great thing is that it has followed in the footsteps of platforms like StockX, launching what it calls presented by Collect. You also have eBay. Again, folks, I'm going to give you a, a quick overview here because I will talk deeply more about that later on in the show. But eBay also is a great place to list sneakers, especially if your account has a positive feedback rating. And some sellers also list products on Facebook groups such as uh, Yeezy Talk Worldwide or Supreme Talk. You might want to really double check them. They are pretty cool. And um, those groups are regulated within the group itself, while local sneaker dedicated Facebook groups are also a smart place to check. One thing you have to remember though, folks, and I, want, and I will never overemphasize this, you want to make sure that you understand that transactions on the on facebook groups are completely peer-to-peer -peer with all negotiations handled between the buyer and the seller so do not think about facebook sort of uh, validating or facebook uh, authenticating any any of the transactions it doesn't happen one thing you also want to think about here is that um you need to understand if you go to a certain website you need to understand the lingo that is produced there so you have short shorthand terms have developed on some of these sites and uh, let me give you a quick cheat sheet here explaining the most common the most common terms so you have a wtc that's word word to cough wts word to sell obo or best offer nwt new with tax nwot new without tax you need to kind of understand those that, that lingo because this is what this is what drives the conversations on those websites one thing you have to be very clear about is that there are other ways you can sell your the the video this video covers uh, how to sell how to sell your sneakers on the internet but you can also sell your sneakers off the internet in other words offline you can buy them online but you can sell them offline and speaking about selling sneakers offline Let's talk about consignment. So let's say you're selling, all, you know, you you are selling offline. Consignment shops are another option with their own set of uh, pros and cons. So depending on what you're selling, your shoes might take months or minutes to meet a prospective buyer. And when they do sell, commission is considerably higher. So s spots such as Fly Club and Stadium Goods will take up to 20% of sale price. Although this business is also vet their products for authentic authenticity. And, uh, and when it comes to negotiating, oh, but before I speak about negotiating, I would just want to also mention uh, Round 2 Hollywood. This is uh, another consignment shop. They, they make a name for themselves in the consignment business with locations in Los Angeles, Virginia, New York, and Miami. Other smaller consignment shops can take up to 50% of the sale price. So you got to really think about that before going offline here. We personally, after doing the research, we do not recommend that in the, to start with because it's just in a lot of your, your profits. But again, this is up to you. When it comes to negotiating, you have to really understand that it is very rare that a sneaker transaction will be as simple as a buyer reaching out and saying they'll buy the shoes without any further questions. They will ask questions. S skeptical and smart buyers will request more photographs. They want to know more details about the condition of the shoe. And will want to negotiate your list price so if you believe your price to be fair you should stand firm to get the value you want very important folks if you're eager to get rid of a pair of sneakers however perhaps you'll be more willing to come down on the list price one strategy is to set a list price for example uh, 250 that reflects the market value but it's still above your absolute minimum 
living room for you to drop the price if necessary. Let's say, for example, if you have to drop it all the way to 225, all right? And when it comes to when it comes to shipping, I should say that once you are complete with you are over with the, the negotiations and payment details have been sorted out, you will need to ship your sneakers to your buyer. It is very common courtesy to complete this within 24 hours of payment of payment being completed. Although this time period should also be agreed upon before sale. So what I'm trying to say here is that anything within three to five days is usually fine and keeping a clear line of communication with the buyer can help during times when you are unable to get to a post office. So be sure to go to your local post office, FedEx, UPS, you name it, to get a price quote on the shipping cost, especially if you're planning to send them internationally. That's kind of important. So if you've listed your shoe, let's say with price plus shipping, in other words, you're selling the, 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 the so the, um, the customer is getting the shoe as is, you want to make sure that both sides agree on the cost. So as for the actual packing of the sneakers, it is very common courtesy to double box sneakers. This is kind of important. You can go on YouTube or Facebook to find guides and tutorials on how to do this. Let's now talk about, you know, you, you ship the, the item, everything is fine, but then you have post shipping problems. Yeah, God, this this kind of stuff happens, folks. Post shipping problems are, are common. Unfortunately, not all transactions run smoothly. This is just a, this is just a fact of life. Things get lost in the mail. Buyers might not agree with the condition of a used product or and this is an extreme case, but it happens. You will encounter a buyer who purchased, who makes a living off scamming unsuspecting sellers. This is, this, is, this is the way things go, folks. So while every problem is different, there are some general guidelines to follow. And I'm going to give them to you here. First, communication. So we're going to talk about four things. Communication, negotiation, evidence gathering, and case opening. Communicate. So if something goes wrong, the most important thing is to be readily available. So to tell the buyer what went, what went wrong and to communicate how you will attempt to fix it. Because aggrieved customers are much more likely to cut you some slack if you respond to messages in a timely fashion and try to find a solution to their problem. And it's all about being professional too, folks. It's not just about having excellent customer service. You want to be professional. You need to negotiate. So if someone claims the sneakers you send them are not as described, Guess what? It might be in your best interest here to offer a small refund to avoid a problem escalating. It might hurt your bottom line, but will show the buyer that you are a reliable seller and someone who's willing to compromise, which can only be good in the long run. Again, this is what it is. If you're thinking about business, we're thinking a long run here. We're not thinking about only short run, just kind of make some ka some cash in the short in the short run. We're thinking long run. You also need to think about gathering evidence. How do you do that? So if things do escalate and they do escalate sometimes you and if you are unable to come to an agreement, the buyer might open a case against you through their bank or in or PayPal. If this happens, you'll need to be able to prove you did everything in your power to prevent the issue from occurring. So in the case of damaged or lost goods, for example, or claims that the product is inauthentic, you're best off providing a tracking number and detailed pictures or, or videos of the sneaker before you send it out. It's important to know that until the sneaker arrives at its destination and it's signed for, it is your responsibility as the seller. So if the postal service loses your package, if USPS loses your package, for instance, you will have to refund the buyer, which is why it is always, always important to insure your packages, even though it's slightly more expensive. Insurance should go into the, the, your your operating cost here. How do you open a case? So let's say you have been scammed. You want to open a case with PayPal or your bank. Buyers and sellers are both generally protected through PayPal. So it comes. So when it comes down to a scam, it's all about the evidence you have and how convincing your argument is. Generally, though, most transactions don't get to this stage. This last few points are only in case something goes bad or an accident like lost mail happens, but you got to know about this so you are better prepared for them. Okay, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back right after this. I have more to talk about. So folks, 
I'm still here and welcome back to another section of the awesome Sweetie Kiwi show. If you love the content's clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are aware whenever we drop a new show. I want to quickly give you an overview of the shoe reselling industry because this is this is a big this is a big thing. It's the big market. Can you believe that the resale market, the footwear resale market, not, not just for footwear, for sneakers because footwear is way bigger. But the sports footwear sneakers, it's estimated to be over one billion dollars annually, and this is just in the United States. Even though only an estimated four percent of sneakers end up being purchased for immediate resale, the market has attracted side hustlers and entrepreneurs. So at the top of the heap, some resellers are moving more than two million dollars in inventory every year. Think about that. So when you, as you are mulling over your strategy to sell sneakers on the internet. You got to think about what shoes to buy. So, what shoes, which brands and models will be profitable? To get an idea of what is hot in streetwear, you want to follow sneaker and fashion publishers like uh, Hot Beast or High uh, High Snoobity, right? And the thing called, so you want you, what you want to also do here is that you want to immerse yourself in your local sneaker commu communities by attending a sneaker convention and getting an idea of what people are wearing. And what people are talking about is very important. You have to be in the move. You have to, like Germans call this, the zeitgeist. You have to be around to know exactly what's happening. So learn about the Jordan brand, for example. Begin to follow Instagram accounts that have to do with sneakers and sneaker news. So you'll automatically be doing research every time you are killing time on the gram. So you want to combine all of the above with checking aftermarket prices on sites like eBay and Facebook groups as well and you can calculate your estimated profits. Now, once you have this, once you have found the shoes that you are interested in, where do you buy them for resale? You can go through eBay as I said earlier, you can go through Facebook groups and sneaker conventions. For new shoes, you go directly to the brain's website. Let's say you go to nike.com or adidas.com and either press your luck right on the release time or you can utilize a sneaker bot to greatly increase your chances of securing a pair at retail price. There are also authorized retailers that, that stock desired shoes like the Foot, like Foot Locker and, or East Bay, but it's always best to go with lesser known sites like Mr. Porter and N to increase your odds of getting the shoes at retail. One thing I also want to talk about is that there are some common and costly mistakes you have to be aware of. You know, let's say, uh, make sure that you don't get fix, fix, counterfeits. This was, uh, you know, the, this could be a mess trying to get your money back from the seller or if you buy this through PayPal. You could you, also make sure that you have everything set up in terms of uh, PayPal and that you understand PayPal policies that you don't have your money. You don't have your money being on being on hold, being held there. It's very important. Another thing you want to do also when it comes to buying uh, shoes for resale is to think about is to calculate to factor in the equation how long it will take the seller to ship the, the, the item to you for you to 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 review for you to investigate for you to inspect take a picture and ship and ship it back to your to your customer. Also, don't make the mistake of buying uh, shoes. I would say abroad, especially China, because uh, the rate of over the rate of counterfeit is kind of high there. If you want to buy sneakers and make sure that you just buy the sneakers in the United States, because uh, this will take you forever if you're trying to you know, reclaim your money, ask for a refund and uh, go back. And no, this is just a waste of time. Another question that you want to pay attention to, and I was just talking about China is that you have to with china and other countries i'm not picking up china here it's just in the news in the sneaker resale community there has been in the last 10 15 years a large onslaught of cases of fake fake sneaker cases that um it's is just been crazy so how do you deal with fakes although there are plenty of fakes on the on the market there are also plenty of resources that will educate you on fakes and how to spot the differences so one thing you want to do is as a buyer, you can ask for detailed tagged pictures. In other words, with written proof of ownership, often the time on a piece of paper next to the shoe in each picture. 
and you want to compare them to the numerous tutorials on YouTube or on sneaker forums that will give you a good idea of whether they are authentic or not. Also, if this is a new release, only deal with people who include the receipts from the store that they purchased the item from. That way you will know they are real and also if it's your intention to turn around and resell them, then you can prove to buyers they are the real deal as well. Another issue when dealing with fakes here is selling authentic shoes but having the buyer try to claim that they are fake. So this can be solved by including a receipt as mentioned, as I just mentioned, or you can take detailed pictures as you are shipping to prove that you are in fact shipping authentic shoes. Be sure though folks, and this is very important, to include tracking with signature required and insurance so the buyer cannot, cannot claim that he or she never got the kicks in the first place. And as a reseller, if you are going to sell shoes on the internet, how do you manage inventory? Especially if you are going to move a lot of, a lot of footwear, if, you, if you're moving hundreds of thousands of inventory every year, how do you manage inventory? The, the short answer, according to many experts, is don't. Don't. What you're trying to do here is you're not in you you're not in, a, in an Amazon business. You're not a consignment portal. You're not a consignment warehouse. No, you want to try and sell each pair as quickly as, as you buy them. That's the best way because unless you have a large you're somewhere in uh, in rural America where you have a large plot of land and you can just uh, you can just uh, store the, the sneakers on the land. You don't want that. You want to. That's the whole idea of flipping. Whole idea is flipping. You don't want to store inventory. So when selling shoes, it can be easy to amass a bulky cut collection that you have to keep somewhere. To avoid that, you want to focus on brand new releases or shoes that are really hot classics that you know will sell quickly. So this, by doing this, you're able to to have less headache and hassle storing and tracking the inventory and also be able to turn your cash over to reinvest in the next flip faster. I'll be right back right after this to not go anywhere. Welcome back folks to another uh, section of the awesome Sweetie Kiwi show. We're still having a conversation here around how to sell your sneakers on the internet. And uh, I just want to quickly talk about where to flip your sneakers. Now, there are many ways to flip your shoes, folks, and you can send them hand to hand to people you know. You can drop them off at big consignment retailers such as Flat Club or Stadium Goods. You can list them on eBay or you can sell them through websites such as StockX and apps like Goat. I've talked about that before, but you've got to be mindful of a lot when you're reselling your shoes. What are the fees? How long would it take to sell the sneakers or get paid? How will you get paid? How much effort do you need to put in to put in on your end? Will anyone save you if you get scammed? Here, here is a roundup of the most popular sites, stores, and ways to resell your shoes. So I, I, we just want you to be informed here at the, the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. So we have taken the who, what, where, when, and whys into consideration and presented it to you so you can make up your own mind. So here are the pros and cons. First, we have StockX. So StockX is based in Detroit. They also have an online platform for the selling process. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty easy. They, it's based on a bid ask process. So you can list your sneakers for whatever much you want, want on the site and potential buyers can choose to accept your price or not. The fee, the seller fees are 9.5%, but the rate will decrease. The rates will decrease as soon as you complete three sales. Shipping cost 13.95. Payment processing is 3%. So uh, your money gets into your PayPal account once the shoes are verified and shipped. You can also opt for direct deposit. The pros. So the more you use the service, the better. So your rates will go down the more sneakers you sell. You don't have to wait for someone to buy your shoes to get paid. The cons. Stock as goes through a high volume of transactions and people have had issues on the buying end with the quality of some of the sneakers in the past. So the, the platform has also experienced major data breaches exposing a reported 6 million customers personal information in the last few years. Now we talk about Instagram, Twitter. Now Instagram, you know, it's all online. So you all only have to post the sneakers that you want to sell on your personal uh, account and hope that people will see it. You also can, uh, you, you also can have uh, people 
PMing you and asking about the more in, asking about, about more info. There's no fee. The payment process, however you set it up, it can be PayPal, it can be Venmo, it can be in person. The pros, you make your own rules. You keep all the money from the sale. The cons, there's no regulation. Every sale is risky. Is risky. You don't know who you are going to meet. So you are relying on your own following word of mouth to get out, to get the word out that you are selling sneakers. Then we also have Flat Club. Flat Club is located in New York. They have offices in New York and Los Angeles, and they're also online. The fee, there is an 80-20 split. So you, you keep the 80% and they take 20%. The, the thing with Flight Club is that you drop the sneakers at you, you drop the sneakers off at one of their locations, so you can also ship the store the shoes to them. So you work with the staff to find an agreed upon price that's based off the store's selling history of a certain sneaker. All right, the payment process you can uh, you can either have the money paid out into your online account or have the money transferred to to the bank. It's up to you. The pros. Flat Club is the OG in the game, and it is a trusted place to sell your sneakers. So the stores are tourist hubs, and product often sells very quick once you have put it up. You can also adjust your pricing online if you're having trouble selling it at the set price. In terms of the cons, Flat Club has the right to refuse any sneaker, whether the store is overstocked or it's having a hard time selling a certain product. So the selling process here is not as instantaneous as with apps although the retailer has teamed with uh, they have teamed up with goat so that could change in the future who knows you also have uh, grilled and grilled is located in new york city they have an online online platform the, it is a great marketplace that sells more than just sneakers so it's known for selling high-end clothing and streetwear too so instead of having to go directly through grilled employees to sell your products you upload the products post three photos and one of them needs to be tagged with your username on it so you can sell your products all in one of uh, four markets which are separated with into uh, high-end designers streetwear and sneakers classic menwear or lower-end items the fee six percent selling fee for domestic and inter international sellers there is also 2.9 percent plus 30 percent 30 cents fee for paypal so all payment is through paypal and uh, the pros, Grilled is a diverse marketplace, so there may be a different swap of, of products. Other reselling stores, apps may not accept a certain shoe, but you can still upload it to Grilled and try your luck. In terms of cons, there is no vetting of whether the product is real or fake before it's uploaded, so you need to do your research and see the, the seller's feedback. You have Stadium Goods located in New York, they also have their online platform there they have nordstrom locations they have uh, partnerships with ebay and alibaba so stadium goods may have only opened five years ago but it's quickly becoming one of the biggest and most reputable sneaker marketplaces out there so you can either drop off your shoes at a store's physical location in new york city or ship them to the store you can come up with you come up with uh, the prices with the store staff based on market values so once your shoes are sold, you are paid. And the store does weekly payouts. So the store has an 80-20 split. So you get 80% and they keep that to 20%. You can pick up the check in terms of, for, for the payments. You can pick up the check in person or receive a wired ACH payment. When it comes to pros, Stadium Goods is becoming the industry benchmark in reselling because they work with big names such as Nike, China's Ali, Alibaba, eBay, and Nordstrom. So the company is to be trusted. But when it comes to cons, there is no way to collect your money online as of now. So there's also no way of changing the prices of your listed shoes on the internet. You are paid once a week rather than when the shoe is sold. What about Goat? Goat is, a, is an app, so the location is online. So to sell on GOAT, you need to apply to become a seller. So once you become an authorized seller, you 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 list your shoes online. So if a sale is made, you will ship the, the shoes to GOAT for them to be authenticated. So once everything checks out, the money will be deposited to you. The fee, you, you have to pay $5 in the United States, 20 bucks in Canada, 25 bucks in Guam, 30 bucks for the rest of the world. So there is also a 9.5% commission fee. So the fee can increase to 15% and as high as 20% for canceled order orders due to replicas, wrong size, wrong shoe, wrong condition, 
uncommon manufacturing defects not mentioned. For each seller cancellation, 10 points are also deducted from their seller rating. Payment process Once the sneakers are verified, the money will be credited to your GOAT account, which you can use to buy sneakers or you can cash out. On the pro side, on the benefit side, GOAT is the biggest app based reselling platform on the internet. The selling process as well as the payments are quick and easy. So it's all done through your phone. So the only thing you need is ship the sneaker. So once you're verified, you can sell new or used sneakers with or without a box. It's really pretty easy. They've also launched a program where they clean your sneakers for you. In terms of um, disadvantages, you need to be verified to use the program so it may be the easiest or quickest way to sell your shoes. The company says it's verifying sellers in small batches. It, might, it, it takes a while. I want to also talk about eBay. You can sell the your, your sneakers on, on eBay. And of course, location for eBay is online, a great platform. You take images of your sneakers and create a listing. You can either have people bid on your sneakers or allow them to be bought instantly at a set asking price. So once a buyer is determined, the seller comes in contact with the buyer and payment is made. So it's not really an automatic process and buyers can flake. So you ship the sneakers yourself, so you add the shipping into the cost. So eBay gives you 50 free listings per month. Beyond that is 30 cents per listing. So according to eBay, the selling fee is 10% or lower. So the buyer can pay with PayPal, credit or debit. And the great thing about eBay is that it's the biggest marketplace on the internet. And the more you sell and positive feedback you receive, the more likely that you're going to make more sales. It's also the OG place to buy and sell sneakers on the internet. And the thing here is that you can put, you'll potentially have more people looking at your listings. On the negative side, if, if buyers flake, you have to relist the item, although eBay will refund your fees. There are also fix on eBay, so buyers are sometimes worried about getting sneakers on there. What about independent consignment stores? For example, similar to Stadium Goods or Flat Club, you go to the store, talk to the owner or employee, figure out a price and wait for the shoes to sell. Typically, it's 80-20 split. And the payment process varies, but it typically is an in-store cash payout. So if you don't live, the pros here is if you don't live in New York or LA, it may be more difficult to sell your sneakers with flight club or stadium goods. So you might want to try out those independent consignment stores. And on the con side, you have, there is a lower volume of traffic at this store, right? So it's not as big as a web presence. So it may take longer to sell your shoes. So it's up to you to think about what, what, what really works for you. And uh, I also want to talk about round two. Round two is another, uh, is another, um, platform and uh, they are based they have offices they have warehouses they have stores in Miami Los Angeles New York and they also have an online presence and uh, in terms of um, the selling process it's pretty straightforward for the payment process you bring whatever you're selling it could be clothing sneakers into the store and round two buys it outright from you on the spot and you pay you're paid in cash there there are no fees the pros is that you have instant cash, you can sell new or used items. And on the cons, you on the con side, you need to do your research and know how much you want to sell the item before before even entering there. And you have to be able to haggle. You have to be able to, to negotiate the price. You need to come to one of its multiple locations to sell your stuff. I'm talking about round two here. All right, folks, so this is really it. This is a roundup of how to sell your sneakers today. This was a pretty detailed tutorial. I wish you good luck. I, I wish that I was able to add value to, to your resale business today. And um, please give us a big thumbs up and uh, also comment and share this content if you believe that we have uh, added value to your life. And also don't forget, please subscribe to this channel and uh, turn on the notification bell so you are informed in real time whenever we drop a new show. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>